And good afternoon. I welcome you to today's trading spotlight webinar. Today it's Friday. It's the 19th of November 2021. And I just want to say, um, please excuse uh, the headline, the teaser. Um, it has been wrong, <laughs> but I think that was that was my mistake. Um, so today's topic is not about combining the best of two worlds. Um, that was the topic of last week's webinar. But today, what we want to do is we want to have a look here on the question why serious paper trading shouldn't be underestimated. And I want to give you some insights, some thoughts, um, some, some food here in this context for the upcoming weekend to just think about this. Um, why you shouldn't underestimate demo trading in general and don't take it uh, lightly, let's say, and just play around a little and then say, okay, that's great, looks great. I got, I don't know, let's say um, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million um, 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 account balance and just went all in long or all in short on the trade. I just thought would play out nicely and then uh, take it from there, open a live account. But um, today I wanna show you why it's so, so, so important and why I'm a big fan of, in fact, paper trading because it helps you to establish habits which will help you in the long run in your trading really to, um, yeah, to, in fact, it's building a solid foundation and taking it from there. And um, we wanna shine a light on this and then give you some deeper deeper um, um, thoughts around this topic. If you watch the recording, by the way, very important, if you watch the recording now on YouTube, um, please feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, leave a thumb up here for, if you like what you will see in the upcoming minutes. Um, if you have any comments, any questions, if you have um, any, any um, um, hints for us, what you'd like us to produce for you here as a video, trading related video um, in the future, let us know. Um, we'd be more than happy to um, work something out then and present it to you here so that you can profit in your overall trading from it. Um, all the guys right now listening to this um, live event here in Zoom, feel free to use the chat box. But wait, let me just um, type in a hello trader here into the chat box so that you know where to find hello traders, where you can find uh, the place where to ask all your questions. Feel free to ask them. I'd be more than happy to answer them. And um, that's it around the introduction. Let's just jump right into the presentation for today. So question, why serious paper trading shouldn't be underestimated? And um, first of all, before we start, we'd like to shine a light on the broker who makes all this possible here. So I'm presenting all these webinars and, and not just inviting me, but also my dear colleagues, Paul and also Marcus every day. Um, here to, to present our thoughts on trading. It's um, Admirals, the broker behind this um, Forex and FX broker, which is in this industry with um, over 8,000 financial instruments being offered since um, 20 years, I think. Yeah, 2001. That was uh, the birth date of, um, of the company. Um, initially started out as Admiral Markets. And then um, there was a rebranding taking place within the last months. And the reason for that is because it's not solely um, an FX and CFD broker. Still, this is part of the business, but um, beside of that, it's a real financial service provider, true multi-asset brokerage that has already taken place over the last years. You probably have seen, checked out the website at mymarkets.com. They are um, around this invest solution, physical stocks trading be available. Um, um, but now there's another step being made. Now there's also a um, 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 credit card being offered, for example, so that you can hopefully make money trading your mark, um, um, your account and then use the funds and then buy, let's say, a nice trading book, let's say, on Amazon, for example. Um, and and uh, you can do this with a credit card. There's further plans to further um, extend the offering here from a financial service provision perspective. Um, there's also something in the loop when it comes around crypto trading. Um, further details can be found once available on the website. Fully regulated broker, SISEC, FCA, ASIC in Australia, for example. Um, here in Germany, we usually refer to Admirals as probably the DAX expert or the most competitive broker when it comes to FX, uh, I'm sorry, CFD. In this case, FX trading is also uh, phenomenal when it comes to the overall spreads. We made this a topic in a recent um, a webinar here within this trading spotlight webinar series, but and especially around the DAX, it's one of the most competitive offerings. Point A eight um, point spread during main trading hours, um, very fast, reliable or execution, definitely a place um, uh, to, to, to be when it comes to active um, day trading, especially scalping and so on and so forth. Further details also can be found here on the website. One World, One Broker. So there's now also, besides um, the um, other regulatory bodies here, which I already mentioned, there's now a regulatory entity um, came to... to um, 
to life and respectfully plays a role now too. It's in Jordan. Further information also can be found on the website. And now let's jump into today's action. So today's agenda, first of all, um, we want to shine a light here on um, a very simple question, in fact, and you might probably already guess the answer, what is trading? So um, what is trading about? Not what is trading, but what is trading about, in fact. And um, in this context, certainly we want to then also shine a light on our trading brain um, and uh, an, an approach here, how to, to understand our dealing to some extent um, every day, our behavior a little better why we sometimes feel um, uh, difficulties when it comes to let winning trades run, cut losing trades short. Um, in this context, it definitely makes sense to understand um, our brain a little better, how it works. Um, we don't make this an academic um, 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 uh, um, lecture here, but uh, we definitely want to shine a light here on, on the basic concept here. Um, I then want to present to you in this context, the best book on trading. I'm not kidding. <coughs> I'm sorry, um, I'm not kidding. So this is in fact the best book on trading and um, you already find out that it's the best book on trading um, at second glance. So it's not um, visible from uh, at first glance. And uh, so in this context, Probably some of you have read it already, probably um, not all of you, System 1, System 2, some of you probably already guess in which direction uh, this, this hint will, will go here. We want to uh, give an idea on, uh, yeah, to overcome a conflict um, here when it comes to System 1 and System 2, what this is, um, this will be presented in the presentation. And um, then I will, I, will, I will show you how to turn a routine into a habit here. And then answering finally the question why it's so important to take demo trading in fact seriously and um so let's start here with first of all the question what is trading about and um unfortunately oh, okay it doesn't matter so it's the whole slide now um we want to answer this question so simply put i think you already have guessed it and if, if we trade we want to make money right so if we want to, if we trade the markets, we want to make money. That's that's what what all this is about. And um, the thing now is that while we certainly want to make money trading every day, um, our day to day job, in fact, is uh, not only making money. Hopefully, this will be the final result. But our day to day job consists of thinking. Uh, for example, what do I want to go long? What asset is a potential short candidate, for example? So this is a question, a decision I take here. Um, what is the potential player on the long side, on the, on the short side, for example? Or where do I get the most attractive risk reward for my trades in this context? And um, these are decisions or questions I have to answer to um, start my trading day um, um, from a from a from a well well founded position. Let's put it that way. So to give you um, an idea on how my day, for example, looks like. So I know as of now, for example. So we are right now um, um, through the the main earnings season already. My main focus is in fact um, on trading U.S. equities. And um, still, there are some earning releases um, um, which are published after markets closed, usually. Um, sometimes it's before markets open. So in case, for example, of Kohl's, KSS, um, that's one, one company I'm currently looking at. They presented um, um, earnings yesterday before the market opened. Um, and um, so I've seen some, yeah, some a very strong day. So look, look up the chart yourself. So the um, um, ticker symbol is KSS. You can watch it uh, yourself. You, you will see that the um, stock was really, really strong. Um, closed over plus 10% for the day. Really, reason for that is very simple. Earnings were crushing. So really strong numbers. And the stock closed at the top of the day, so um, or at the high of the day, so that's very interesting because we we saw an initial flush on a downside. So um, to give you some 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 thoughts here, and then the market closed um, at the top of the day. So that being said, brings us um, um, to a simple concept, in fact, which I use as a, um, um, a fundament then to formulate a plan for today. So for example, what do I want to do today? Well, I want to trade KSS here from the long side if a certain level holds, which is right now um, sixty one. So in the pre-market, we are trading around this level right now. Um, 
and um, I want to be long the stock because it closed within the um, um, 25% of the of the trading range yesterday with, with one ADR move minimum. So the ATR in KSS, for example, is around $2. So yesterday, the overall trading range was um, greater $4, so more than 2 ADR. And we closed at the daily highs, which means within 25% of this daily trading range, which means nothing more than, well, obviously, um, here, market participants continued to buy the stock or held the demand above the supply till the end of the day. That's a clear sign, at least for me, or that it's the fundament of my thesis then to say, okay, well, there's demand, which is overcoming the supply. Usually that should result in rising uh, prices then also for the upcoming day, uh, because institutions are now awakening, wondering, well, which stock has um, a favorable outlook, especially now coming into the end of the year, um, something we, we refer to as window dressing takes place. So which value titles in this case, for example, if there is this rotation, look at it from this perspective, the rotation from growth into value because growth outperformed value, for example. Well, what 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 does that mean into the um, um, yearly close? Probably there will be a rotation from growth into value, which value titles are of interest right now, which look favorable, which have a great outlook for the upcoming year. And Coles comes to mind because Coles is a value title and Coles here in this context delivered very strong earnings and a very strong full year, a 21 guidance in this case, but also um, um, a very prosperous outlook for the upcoming year. That being said, let me come to the conclusion, coming back to my um, 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 point here I want to make. Well, the question I answer here is today I want to be KSS long. So simple as that. So this is the decision I'm taking. And um, do I get a very attractive risk reward? Well, yes, certainly, especially if we break above 64. So you can see I already went into depth into the trade and, and I want to answer that question for me. The only thing is, and something I haven't yet spoken about is... Well, I don't know whether I will make money today or not. I don't even know if I will have a trade. Let's assume I'm, let's say, want to get um, long KSS at 61. And then in the low, we trade at, I don't know, 61.05 or something. I'm not getting filled and the market moves away from my price and I'm not getting a fill at all. So I don't really know whether, whether um, um, I'm making money or not. But this is not what I'm focusing on here, but I focus on the overall process I run through every day over and over again, I have certain criteria I need to be met to answer these two questions and make the decision here in my trading, what is the best market to trade based on what I have in, in terms of information and where do I get the best risk reward? I certainly could also, for example, look at, um, I don't know, don't know, looking at Tesla, for example. So um, right now, I mean, there's lots of volatility right now, but um, after these um, quite volatile two weeks, the last two weeks, well, um, the, the action somehow switched a little to other titles. Um, and, and probably there is um, not so much meat left on the bones, let's say, so that I can um, um, find attractive risk reward trades. And this is a question, a decision I have to take beforehand, even though it could be that the decision is the wrong one and I could make more money trading Tesla today. But based on the criteria I go through and the questions I answer before the trading day starts, I took the decision now to um, say, okay, I want to I wanna trade calls here. So the thing is now coming back um, to, to our presentation here, um, that being said, our daily trading is in fact, first of all, and most of the time um, about making the right decisions. And the thing is now that the question usually arrives, um, what can we make or how can we make better decisions, especially under stress, respectively under, under pressure? So um, the thing is that, that you, you can already see that here. So um, markets start open in 50 minutes. I know I'm in a webinar right now, so I won't look at the market opening, but I really know what I have to look at and I know which stock I want to watch today, which um, um, meets my criteria for a play for today. So that's a lot, there's a lot of preparation already taking place, um, which then results in me having less stress. So just imagine jumping um, right into the action, having a list of stocks and just rip, flip through every stock um, um, or every asset class. It doesn't really matter if it's stocks, if it's some um, indices you're looking at, DAX, Dow, S&P, if it's precious metals, um, gold, silver, copper, aluminum, what else, uh, palladium, palladium, whatever. Um, or if it's currencies or something like that, but just flip through everything and, and say, I try to recognize a pattern here. 
um, and then jump right into the action and trade this pattern. So it doesn't really, I mean, it follows a routine, but it's not a well thought out routine, let's say. It's not a, a, a process where you have clear criteria, which makes it duplicable. But first of all, you, you just look at the charts, you flip through the charts. That can make definitely sense, but it should happen before the market opens. And then you should find nice pattern you see, and then ask the question, is the pattern I see here, um, do I find the fundamental trigger, which will then result in a strong break on the up and down side and a strong move in one or the other direction. So this is already, as you can um, 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 see here, reducing my overall stress, stress and, and pressure in my trading. And um, then finally, we come to the conclusion, um, since I don't know whether I will make money or not, with, with following this routine and finding out whether this um, stock as a class, currency pair, whatever, um, um, fits my, my criteria. I still don't know whether I make money or not, but I know if I continue to do this over and over and over again, chances are higher that I will make money in the long run than I will then 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 that I will lose money. So in this context here, um, I should definitely focus and, and my main point is I want to focus on the process here and not on the result. Even if I'm now getting filled and I'm getting stopped and I lose money, I still continue to follow this routine because it makes sense to be well prepared for the day based on certain criteria and based on, well, then the, 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 the fundamental driver or trigger, which we will find and hopefully leave my, 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 give me a higher chance of succeeding than of, of losing money here. So now what we want to do in the next step is um, we want to, here after now focusing on the process um, and why it's so important, um, we want to make a next step and look at our trading brain. In fact, we look at our brain. There's no such thing as trading brain, but there's only our brain. Um, and we can easily duplicate this here onto other um, aspects of our daily life, um, daily lives here in this context. Um, there's also no such thing as trading psychology. There's only psychology. Um, and, and, and then you adapt it accordingly to your trading. Um, but here, to, to stay in the presentation, we look at our trading brain. So what we can say, what we know is that our brain consists, in fact, of three parts. So the first is the so-called reptilian part. It's where um, instincts and automatic reactions are located. So like um, if, I, if I'm put under pressure, for example, um, I want to I wanna, um, escape the situation. And how do I escape it? Well, there are certain ways. First is I could just um, fly, uh, fly away or, or um, 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 uh, escape the situation by running away. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, um, 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 next chance to do that is, for example, to just stay there and just stare at the situation, at the um, um, situation which puts pressure on me. Like, um, let's let's probably look at it from a trading perspective. So, um, for example, um, let's assume we are reopening a position. Or no, third third reaction is um, I could fight. Okay, I could confront the situation and try to um, escape this con um, um, the situation by fighting against it. So let's um, bring this di di straight to trading. How can we think about this? Well, just assume the following. Um, we are opening a position for whatever reason, doesn't matter. Let's say, well, we are right now, November year end rally. So Santa Claus rally, I'm just going long because equities rise and I'm going long. That's my reason. Okay, I'm not placing a stop. I'm just entering the market. I'm going long. So now... Um, these three outcomes are, okay, first of all, um, the market is moving against me. So I enter the trade, the market is dropping, I'm going long, market drops. Um, so what do I do? I shut down the computer. I just don't want to see it anymore. Probably mm, success is about, let's say, five to 10 minutes. After that time period, I, I open the platform again and look whether probably um, uh, the problem has solved itself and uh, the market has, um, um, in, the, in the last five to 10 minutes, has um, 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 gone back up, let's say. So um, the next thing is I'm just staring at my screen, not knowing what to do. I'm like paralyzed, looking at the screen, just like, oh my gosh, what's, what's just happening? I can't afford to lose the money, whatever it might be. The next thing is, I double down, I fight. So I, I say, okay, well, I bought one contract. So now the market dropped, let's say 50 points. I'm buying another contract, doubling down. So it only needs to come back 25 points here now for me to break even and probably even um, succeed on the trade. And um, so this is a so-called 
yeah, reptilian um, or instinct reaction. I'm underlying here based on, on my brain. It's just um, within me. So there's no chance to escape this. It's just part of my um, human nature and part of my brain. The next thing then, um, or the next part here of, of our brain is the so-called limbic part. So it's about emotions and feelings. Uh, well, I, I'm not really sure whether I need to dig deep, too deep into this topic because emotions and feelings that they play a very important role in our trading. Um, everyone who, who opened a live account and has already traded live knows this. And even those who probably um, are a trading a demo right now um, know this because even here, there's some feelings around the, the ego itself. And then if you want to be right, you want to be right, you want to be on the right side of the market um, um, in your trades then because it gives you a good feeling. And that's just where the limbic part here of our brain comes into play. And then we have the third part. This is the so-called neocortex. So the neocortex is in fact, let me just, by the way, should be here. Um, so the neocortex is in fact um, the, the part you... Um, you hope as a trader um, is the, the, the main reason why you're acting or, in, in your, or you, you rely on one, once you're trading. Let's put it that way. So the neocortex is um, um, responsible for the reason and cognition part. And as traders, we want to make decisions here because they are rational. And um, you don't want to, pro for example, take out the stop because your feelings tell you, I can't afford losing money or um, take out the stop because as long as the market is not, um, 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 it, it's like, catch me if you can. So you can't catch me. It's like a, like a shadow stop, let's say. Um, so you, you keep the stop because you say, well, if I cut my losing trades short, let my winning trades run uh, in the long run, I will likely succeed with my trading, put, put things simply. So this is what the neocortex is available where um, um, is responsible for. The problem now is uh, that decisions, the decisions we take, so the decisions we talked about in the um, 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 former slide here, um, these decisions are a result of all three with the neocortex being overruled by the others. Um, and there is instinctive and emotional parts playing a role here, um, which will lead to something we call bias. And these are heuristics, here or irrationality um, in your decision making, which then um, trigger something we call or refer to as loss aversion or fear of missing out, or um, for example, there's, there's an anchor effect taking place or bandwagon effect, for example, taking place. We had several webinars in the past about these topics. And this is, by the way, something I'm aware of um, because I know, for example, that over the year I traded KSS, coming back to, 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 to just what I presented to you, I traded K KSS really well um, after the first trading results. And by the way, last um, um, quarter, there was um, um, this second um, um, day appearance here of the follow through. In fact, not just the second day, but when um, um, for the fourth, fourth and fifth day um, after very strong earnings were released. And um, so, well, I remember that. It's like, um, um, it's available in my mind. And I know there's a good feeling connected to this because I played it already profitably. So why, why not try it again then today? Um, the good thing about this is this is what I remember. So I already know kind of the structure of the stock then and how it behaves, which is good. Um, but I have a good reason here, for example, to, to, um, um, to, to, to look at it because it fulfilled my criteria. So I try to make it as unemotional as possible to pick this stock. We could get um, go the, the same path here, for example, for another stock at the beginning of the week, I think it was Monday, Target. Um, uh, also delivered numbers, and I traded to Target already profitable um, over the year for two, three times. And um, so I have also here for Target then um, 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 a positive bias, let's say, a good feeling about this, but it didn't fulfill my criteria, so I never really gave it a look for the week because it did not fulfill the criteria I needed to fulfill so that I can take a trade based on the criteria I needed to be fulfilled. So this is then um, the, the, the thing where you see um, you have to follow a checklist, for example, go through a checklist here and say, okay, check, 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 works that's now the place where you can start. It fulfills my criteria, taking it from there. So knowing that, it already shows why it's so important to have these certain criteria here to be fulfilled so that you can take a trade. Um, so now, in the next slide, I'll leave you 
one second or 30 seconds probably alone here with, with this. Um, we talked about this already earlier in another webinar, but I have to just um, check here my, um, my sheet in terms of the criteria I want to see be fulfilled. So what I need to see, for example, is that um, the stock I'm watching has around 10% of its pre-market uh, of the average daily trading volume being traded in the pre-market, for example, so that I know, okay, the, the, the stock I'm looking at here is potentially hot. So one candidate um, beside KSS, where I don't need this necessarily, because um, here it's another, uh, another approach, but um, after earnings is, for example, applied material. You probably have seen that also deliver numbers gapping down today because numbers weren't that good. And um, here, I, for example, I have clear levels I, I want to trade against and I want to watch. So for example, and therefore I have time now because the webinar will end at 45. So in around 20 minutes from now, five minutes from now, the market opening will take place. And I leave the market alone for that time to just um, already establish um, a, a tendency. And then taking it from there, whether these clear levels could be hold or were broken already. So taking it from there. The same is also true for, for, for KSS in this context, by the way. Let me just check here with KSS. I have to double check it. What I certainly like to see is um, that there is that there is um, plenty of volume being traded. But again, this is not necessary for me. Um, what I see is that the stock can really open where it really closed. So it's it's like um, the pre-market, we, we gapped something like 2% lower, where we went 2% lower in the pre-market and, and made it back. I mean, it's um, a thin environment, but still um, it's a sign of strength in my personal opinion here. So, um, so this is very important for me. Um, the reason for that is because it's my routine. It's my daily routine. So if I'm holding a webinar or I don't hold a webinar, it doesn't really matter. I have to look up these numbers to start well-prepared in today. It also gives me a very good feeling. So this is very important. So um, it's, a, it's a mental game. So trading is in this context, a clear mental game because you start out with a clear mind. You, you start out um, um, with clear numbers you can work with. And you know that if a trade appears now, you also have a great way to write it all down afterwards, after the trade is, um, is done, whether it's a winning trade or a losing trade trade and then use this here to um, review your trading in a very detailed way in a very detailed fashion and use this then as some um, um, as a list you can go through once again you can certainly also extend this list in the past uh, and in the future then for future plays but this is definitely a good way to start and to establish such a such a routine here and um, start with a good feeling so that's that's um, um, um it's crucial in fact to start with an edge in my trading so Let's come back to the best book on trading. So the best book on trading, the international bestseller. You can see it there, Thinking Fast and Slow from Daniel Kahneman. We um, had plenty of his input already presented here in webinars. Loss aversion, for example, cognitive biases. Um, so plenty of, of, of input, which can be found in this book and which you can use, not just in terms of your trading, but in your everyday life, in fact. So you can, you can really uh, find yourself so in certain spots he describes there, and you then understand why you behave the way you behave. So put things simply, for example, um, or to get a better idea of this. Um, so this is not trading related. When I went on honeymoon with my wife, that was in 2015. So, um, and uh, two months before we entered the, the plane to fly around the world, in fact, um, there was a, a horrible, it wasn't really an accident, but it was a, um, an act of terror in this case. So there was a, um, 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 let's call it mentally instable, um, a pilot, co-pilot of, a, of, a, of an airplane, which um, flew the plane here with um, um, a, a, a class of, of children, in fact, um, into uh, the Alps here. It wasn't the Alps, I'm not sure. It was, whatever. So, um, um, and... Uh, and um, so the plane crashed, everyone died. Uh, it was running up and down because it was a German school class, it was running up and down in the media. It was horrible, it was just horrible. And um, so now the thing is that you, you see this happening, the plane crashing, um, and you're about to enter a plane and fly around the world here. Um, and uh, well, I have this, this, this bad feeling connected to this because of all the, the, the news being available around this topic. Then. So, and this is what we call cognitive bias because it's like, um, um, 
it's uh it's um what, what's the bias called um it's it's uh i'm missing the I'm missing the, the, the English word for this. Let me just see. Um, it's in Germany, the, the word is Verfügbarkeitsheuristik. It's like, uh, um, let me just see. Verfügbarkeit. Uh, can you really call it availability heuristic? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, it's well, but I think you understand that. It's available. So it's an event which is available because it's all over the news all over the time. Like, Corona, for example, right now. So everyone is talking Corona, uh, COVID pandemic and, and all that stuff. So, and based on that, you then tend to um, overemphasize the possibility that your plane will crash. Even if, if, if it doesn't need to be an, an, an attack of, of, of terror here, but it also needs, or it could be also be a pure accident. But from a statistic standpoint, it doesn't make sense. And this is what I'm talking about here. And this is something which is perfectly illustrated and described within this book and why I highly recommend it, because you then understand if, if you then do something we refer to as inducing rationality, we can call this. So it's like you step back, you look at the stats, you just say, okay, let me just check this out. So usually, and then taking it from there. So you have clear, clean numbers and work with these numbers and then have a, a better way to um, think in a rational way about whatever topic. And this is something which is obviously directly connected to trading. And that's why the book is so, so important for every trader and needs to be read from every trader. So um, every student who comes to me and asks, which book should I read? Um, I tell him, here, read thinking fast and slow. So it's translated in several languages. Um, um, I, I'd be surprised if someone's here within this, this webinar um, 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 whose native language is not included there because it's a, it's, it's a Nobel Prize winner, Daniel Kahneman is a Nobel Prize winner. And um, um, it's, it's one of the best selling books, in fact, um, 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 around the globe. So this is definitely the, the book to, to go. Um, and we want to we wanna take some thoughts here from Kahneman out of this book and, and use it here in our presentation. So what Kahneman does right from the start of the book is, in fact, he talks about system one and system two. And um, in, in terms of system one, he talks about the instinctual um, um, brain here. So he operates automatically, um, cannot be turned off, and there is no sense of voluntary control. Like breathing, for example, this is something you don't need to think about. You just do it. Um, the same is also true when you're confronted with the situation of pressure, as I've shown before. Um, so this is, in fact, the, the, the well, system one can be um, combined of, of the reptilian and the limbic part, while system two is the reasoning brain. It's um, the, it, it requires concentration, choices, effort, and it relies on input from system one. The interesting thing about this is to, to think about it in, a, in an easier way. So you don't need to think about, let's say, um, breathing. You don't need to think about this. You just do it. But you have to think about um, what is 456 times 19. Therefore, you no need to start to think. So it's possible sometimes if, if you if you're, um, know how to do it, um, to calculate this in your brain without using a pencil and, and a piece of paper. But still, you have to think about this. So for breathing, system one, for 456 times 19, you need system two and work through this then. And um, so now the interesting thing is, as you can see, as you can or ha may have guessed, um, system one here is like, this is the feeling. For example, let's put this uh, in a trading perspective. System one is, is like, um, you have the feeling that if you take small gains all the time, well, you can't lose trading. It's not possible because, well, who loses taking profits? First of all, that does make sense. The only thing is, that there is now occasions when the market is not turning around. So you're probably averaging down, comparing big desk, for example, in nine out of 10 times, you're taking small profits. The market does what you want it to do after it moves against you, you average down, and then you see the bounce and the market only needs to, to go a small fraction of the, of the initial move in your direction. And you can close out the position with a small profit. But there's one out of 10 times the market does not turn around and it continues to move against you. And this is the moment when and there, the account crashes when you when when you lose the amount you have in your account, and and so here system one is playing 
yeah, games with you, let's say. So it, it suggests that if you take small profits and if you average down, for example, or whatever, that it makes sense. But if you look at it from a rational perspective and look at it from a mathematical perspective, then you will find out that your, gain, uh, your brain is playing games here with you. And um, you should rely on the reasoning brain or on the rational part of your brain, the neocortex, the system two part. So... So now the thing is, or again, as we, as we sat here, so the thing is now that system two relies on input from system one. And um, so the obvious conflict, which results out of these um, 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 two systems here, um, well, we, we have to look for a solution. And the solution is that we can work here with a three-part model I already went through. You probably haven't seen it. And it's by the way, when we're looking here at this, um, this three-part model, the thing is um, that this is perfectly illustrating why, for example, I am very, very, very skeptical when it comes to live trading events. So it's not that I'm not invited, um, especially here over here in Germany. So usually people um, 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 say, hey, Jens, we have an event here. It's a trade fair. Um, do you want to sit in front of a big audience and trade the markets live, market opening, US market opening especially? Um, well, I say, mm, yeah, thank you very much, but I, I'm not interested in that. And people are like, why? Well, what's the problem here? So you're afraid to lose in front of clients? Um, no, because it suggests something which is not trading. Um, so we, 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 um, um, we, we, we tell the people that trading is only trading. It's only the, the executional part. It's like, I'm sitting there, I execute. I'm buying the stock here. I'm selling EURUSD there. Um, but this is not what trading um, um, is about. Trading is about especially planning the trade, preparation, and reviewing and tweaking. So that what you do in between the execution part, certainly it's important. Certainly it's important to get good prices. Um, I'm, I'm here to, to, to fulfill your needs for risk reward ratios and all that. All this is important, no question about that. But the most important part is in fact the preparation part. So everything I went through with you around calls, for example, and, and why this is of interest for me today and the levels I watch and, and so on and so forth, um, and then after I trade it, I mean, certainly I have to wait for my spot and then execute and, and so on and so forth. It's, I'm not saying it's not important, but this is just a small part of the overall process here um, of profitable trading in general. And then there's the review and tweak part. So what can I learn out of this um, action we have seen? So for example, yesterday, um, there was a, I, I had a mistrade. Um, I was trading Lucid, for example. I had a mistrade. Um, I planned to go long against 46. You can you can check out the chat, the chart. By the way, um, um, we, we didn't um, sh sharply bounce from there. Um, but the problem is more that I did one um, um, bad mistake here and I lost money on a trade where I usually would have been break even for the day. And um, the reason for that was because I was um, too hesitant in, in, um, um, at the first at first glance once we saw 46 being tested. And I saw, for example, a held bit there. And then I saw the bit decrement. Then we saw a bounce and we pushed back to 46 again and the bit continued to decrement and there was no stepping up in the bits or there was no refreshing taking place, but it only decremented, which meant nothing more than we have a great chance here that we will at, at least flush below 46, which we saw. And then we saw a quick rebid and I took the quick rebid trade also after being flushed out in the first um, 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 attempt. But the thing was, I was too hesitant. I saw a first bounce and I just thought, well, this, is, this looks great. It looks like as if we found the bottom, probably I should aggressively take a position here. And it wasn't really FOMO. Or was it FOMO? Fear of missing out, probably. I'm not sure. I jumped up to the trade and I got a bad execution given the risk I was taking, risking the low. So it was only 50 cents, but I was looking for a bounce of at least $2, if not more, which gives you a risk reward in this context from 41 which is still good. I think it's, it's, it's reasonable, but still I wasn't taking into account that uh, the decremation, especially once, once we then saw the, the, the bit decrementing, once we tested this level again, um, I didn't get the, the immediate positive feedback. In addition to that, we saw a flash out and I got slipped here by 15 cents, which is um, um, enormous given the fact that I was risking 50 cents and at the end of the day losing 65 cents. This is this is a lot. This, this is a huge amount given the fact that, that we are betting here on a move of something like 150 to $2 
if, if the market bounces that level that heavily against 46. So long thing short, um, the thing here is that this is the review part. I, I realized this during the trading day. I took notes and I then went through this and I um, used this as a, as, a, as, a, as a basic here, as a fundament to become better in the future. So, so to say, okay, great. I, I saw that there was a decrease. It wasn't the losing trade at all. So it was within my risk and money management plan. So fair enough, no, no, no worries about that. But it's like, I want to learn something out of it because um, a losing trade is only a losing trade, a really a losing and lost trade. If you can't make something positive out of it, if it's a winning trade or a losing trade, it doesn't really matter. And also the winning trade um, needs to find here reason or um, 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 a way to get better. So put it differently. If I see this, if I jump after the trade here and the market then really bounces and, and takes on momentum and 46 holes in the first um, um, instance, um, and I make, um, 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 I make a profit on the trade, I still have to write down, well, it wasn't the best entry here because of this and that and this and that, how to avoid this in the future. And this is a review and tweak part after the good presentation already before. So make long thing short, the trading itself, I mean, there's also certainly something I have to think about how to probably avoid slippage in the next um, um, instance when it comes around the, the execution part. But still, the main focus in, in this trade is really on the preparation, what I can do to be well prepared for the day, and then also how to be better the next time, while the trading itself is only a small fraction of it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm very skeptical when it comes to these, um, 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 uh, when, to, to these live events, especially. So... Let's come to the three-part model and how to avoid this or overcome this conflict or at least reduce it in your trading. So first of all, plan the trade, building up a solid plan and methodology in advance and use a simple checklist. I go through my checklist as I went through and took notes here already several minutes ago, writing down, okay, this is the pre-market volume. This is the average daily trading volume. This is the ATR. This is um, how, we, how we performed in terms of the pre-market volume. This is the gap I want to see and take it from there. Does it fulfill my criteria? Checklist, check, 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 no check, 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 check. Based on that, deciding um, how big a position should be. If my game plan then I pre-formulate here and planning the trade um, um, will be. Um, next step is then trade the plan. So execute your plan, hopefully flawlessly. Didn't do that. This is also a part I can I can work on then based on the trade from yesterday. Risk money management in real time. And this, the target is to stay in the game. So I also have to make sure that I say, okay, if I say, was it just a small um, amount of money I lost here? If I say, let's say my daily loss is, let's say, 100 euros and I'm losing 30 bucks on the trade, I lose one third or 30% of it. This is within my risk parameters. So it's a uh, cheap or yeah well it's, it's a small loss compared to what i can learn based on the mistakes i made and then the next part is the review and the tweak part so i review my performance how i performed in terms of preparation very good how did i perform in terms of trading and execution not so good this is where i can work on this is the place where i can work then on i identify the problem and i make the necessary changes for example think about um, um, techniques, how to be not that hesitant anymore around this and, and avoid the market pushing away from me, for example, or um, more closely and more be more focused when reading the tape, for example. I repeat the process again and take this and do it over and over again. And um, so the good thing about this is that it falls a clear routine here in this context. And the more I do this, the more likely it will become a habit and something I do automatically, in fact. And this is here. It's not the best book on trading, but probably the second best book on trading. Um, it's from Charles Duick. Uh, I'm sorry. So it's from, yeah, Charles Duick. Charles Duick, it's the power of, um, um, of habit here. It's also a um, 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 best-selling book internationally, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so what we, what we do here is um, we try to find a way to automate a process um, um, here, like brushing our teeth, for example. Very great explained within this book how this works. So if we follow this, I already pointed this out. So if we follow this three-part model over and over again, then the process will be automatic one day and subconscious. So I just do it. I just, I don't need to think about this anymore. And it will become a habit. This is very interesting when you look a very successful trader um, over the shoulder and you just think, wow, how did she do this? This is awesome. And then and, and, and you ask him and say, hey, could you please guide me through this? Could you explain this to me? 
And then the successful trader looks at you and says, um, okay, I have to think about this. And then he, he goes through um, um, his plan and said, oh yeah, yeah, now I know. And he can explain it to you. And you're probably surprised to think, hey, why can't he explain this to me? Is it, isn't that clear to him? No, it's subconscious. So he just executes on a um, routine which has um, become a habit over time. And he doesn't really realize why this and that happens. He just does do it. Um, he just does that, what he's doing there. And um, so, well, what, what, what Duke does, does here in his book is um, he identifies uh, three parts um, um, when it comes to habits here. So it's the cue, which is the circumstance which triggers an action. As you have seen, it's an automated process. Um, so if I look at my watch here, it's five minutes before the market opens, I have to check one last time gap pre-market volume. This is like it's a it's a um, um, it's a trigger it's a trigger event. I just have to watch the 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 um, um, my 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 clock here, and I see 25, 325 German time. Okay, I have to and then check this, um, or write it down here. So this is this is the um, 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 the the trigger event. Then I take the routine, which is I write it down. It's very simply uh, simple. I write so this this is nothing of of. of well, th th that sounds very easy, but in fact, it can make a big difference in your overall trading. Um, finally, Q routine, then you have the reward part. It's the reason why we perform the action. Why do I do this? It gives me a good feeling. I know I'm well prepared. I'm sitting here talking to you, but I know I'm well prepared. And I can write this down in my trading journal. I can say I prepared really well. I know why I wanted to watch this and that stock. And I went through my routine. So it's First of all, it's it's the process itself, and it's giving me a good feeling. Even better if it now certainly um, 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 is also going hand in hand with a nice profit, if my trading works out and so on and so forth, no question. But this shouldn't be the main reason you perform the action because um, it's, a, it's a monetary aspect. It's um, It should be a non-monetary goal you want to achieve here, the good feeling. This is the same when it comes to working out, for example. Why do I work out? Well, certainly because it's um, positive for my overall health and so on and so forth. You may probably laugh now. The reason I work out is because I love to take the shower afterwards. It's just such an amazing feeling. You worked out, you just can take a deep breath and then you feel the water. Um, um, and it's just like, this is, this is just, that's why I do that. Um, everything else comes second. And then this is, this is exactly something I motivate you to, to try to achieve, to, um, have the habit and the routine here being established and to give you a non-monetary um, reward in this context. And so now coming back here to the to routine. Um, so once you, <laughs> once you establish such a habit resulting out of a certain routine here, it is difficult, in fact, if not impossible to change it. So the thing is, um, I have to do this. I feel horrible. If I'm not working out, um, I feel horrible. If I'm not taking my notes before the market opens, I feel bad. I feel really bad. And um, that's now bringing us to the topic of today because you might probably have wondered, okay, what has all this to do with demo trading? That doesn't make sense. Oh, it makes perfect sense, believe me, because demo trading, this is the starting point of your trading career. Um, you have to make sure that you start with good habits right from the start, because it's so difficult to overcome bad habits in your trading. And um, so in this context here, um, I don't need to, 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 to explain this even any further because you already can see that. Good habits are the fundament of your trading, your overall positive profitability in your trading, your edge. This is what, what makes you as a trader and results in a rising equity curve in the long run. It's not necessarily one day, losing today, losing yesterday, well, happens, doesn't feel good, but what can overcome this negative feeling of losing money can be the reward and the positive feeling you get out of having followed your process and knowing that following this routine over and over again will, in the long run, result in a positive outcome. So it's like the pain you, you suffer um, after working out really heavily. And then the next morning you wake up and just feel like, chest pain it's like um, because it was chest day and then it's just like well you just think well is it really worth it oh yes it's worth it uh, because the shower overcomes all the pain <laughs> this is what you remember next time you say okay i work out again because of the shower the same is true when following the routine in terms of your trading and again so the power of habit thinking fast and slow from kahneman and the power of habit these are the two books you should definitely um 
look for, look out for, ask for. When it comes now to Christmas, um, ask your your second half. Tell them, well, probably you can uh, uh, you can you can make me a little present, the power of habit, or um, thinking fast and slow. So now the summary for today: trading is mainly about making the right decisions. So it's not about making money but making the right decisions, which will then result in making money in the long run. And to make better decisions in our trading, we should focus on the process and not the results. So it's the process oriented. The next book, by the way, I'd also recommend here is um, from uh, Carol Dweck in terms of growth mindset. Um, also, look, look um, 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 here from... Um, uh, the link on, on Amazon. I haven't prepared it right now, but it's Carol Dweck and uh, it's... Um, it's on growth mindset. I think it's, it's, it's a growth mindset. I'm not really sure about the title itself. So I have it in, in, the, uh, um, um, in the shelf here behind me, but I, I don't know the, the, the title. It's Carol Dweck, at least. So um, as pointed out, our brain consists here of uh, three parts, reptilian, limbic, and the neocortex. And decisions are a result of all three. Even though we as traders want to focus on decisions being made by the neocortex, but the reptilian and the limbic part, especially feelings here, um, play a very, very um, important role and overrule the decisions being taken from the neocortex. Um, it's the instinctive, respectively emotional parts then, leading to biases, leading to heuristics, leading to irrationality in our decisions making like loss aversion FOMO and so on and so forth and the solution to overcome this is um, or at least to minimize to to overcome this conflict respectively minimize the conflicts here between system one and two in our trading is to follow this three-part model plan the trade trade the plan review and tweak and then repeat again and go through this over and over and over and over again and um Hopefully you learned something. So this is the contact details from Admirals, the website. Um, feel free to uh, check out the website. Feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Feel free to leave a thumb up here if you if you like what you've seen. Um, contact um, Admirals for any information around um, your, your account, your trading account. Um, here is the risk disclaimer, fully regulated broker. Um, please read it carefully and I hope you enjoyed the webinar. So talk to you again. And if I'm not mistaken, one and a half week, probably two weeks. I'm not really sure, but um, it will be at the beginning of December. That's what I know for sure. So all the best. Happy trading. Watch your stops and talk to you again next time here with Admirals together. I really look forward to it. All the best. See you. Bye-bye.